Hi everyone and a warm welcome to Fun of Flying. Following on from my previous learning basic Arduino videos regarding toggle switches and push buttons, this time I'm going to show you something similar but on this occasion it's going to be for a single rotary encoder with inbuilt push button. In addition to this I'm going to write code the old fashioned way thus causing the microcontroller to send keyboard commands to the flight simulator rather than turning the microcontroller into a human interface device as I did previously for push buttons. The main difference between the two methods is that using the microcontroller as a human interface device restricts us to the number of physical rotary encoders we can use to 10. This I believe is due to a restriction in Windows and uh, or a restriction within the HID libraries being used in the Arduino sketch code. Using the microcontroller to send keyboard commands on the other hand offers more flexibility due to the sheer amount of commands that you can use such as A, Control A, Alt Control A or any other combinations you can think of. By the way, whichever of these methods you finally choose, there is still a requirement to assign keyboard commands or in the event of using a HID device, button inputs from Windows to the various controls and instruments in the simulator itself. Unfortunately, there's simply no way around it. So once again, I'll be going right back to basics, taking you through another sketch code line by line explaining in more detail what everything does and in today's exercise as alluded to before uh, said code will involve just one single rotary encoder and push button linked to an Arduino Leonardo microcontroller. The reason I'm using an Arduino Leonardo is due to its native USB support and ability to transmit keyboard commands to the PC and therefore the flight simulator which unfortunately the Mega 2560 and the Uno do not have something that I think I've covered many times before. Now as I indicated in the previous videos coding for just one single rotary encoder may not seem very exciting but again I would underline that this is not the point of the exercise it's not the number of rotary encoders that's important at this stage it's how you construct the code to make them work and this is what I would like to teach you today. Obviously once you've got the hang of writing code for just one rotary encoder then you can always add more later as required. Okay so let's get started with the code and later we'll go through the process of assigning the physical encoder in Xplane 12 and in Microsoft 2020 plus carry out a test in both simulators just to make sure everything works. To facilitate this in terms of hardware, this is how I've connected the encoder to the microcontroller with the rotary encoder blue and yellow signal wires connected to pin terminals 2 and 3 respectively and the push button green signal wire to pin terminal 4. The black ground wires in both cases obviously connect to the ground pin terminal on the microcontroller as well. No resistors are required in the physical wiring in this case as we're using the onboard pull-up resistor built into the microcontroller itself which is activated by the sketch code. So as we don't need anything more fancy than that at this stage let's have a look at the coding required. Right so here we are in uh, the Arduino IDE once again and a couple of parish notices to start with. Um, well, the main one being that this uh, sketch code has been tested with the Arduino Leonardo microcontroller only. And the reason that uh, we have to use the Leonardo in this case is due to its native USB support and its ability to send keyboard commands to a PC, which the uh, Mega 2560 and the Uno um, cannot do. So if you are going to try this uh, sketch then please remember um, to use the Arduino Leonardo only. The second thing is with regard to using this keyboard.h library which is included with the IDE, uh, the Arduino IDE software by the way. So all you've got to do is type it as it's shown there and you shouldn't have any issues. Um, is that there is a danger when um, using 
code like this that if you're not actually focused on or don't have a session open of a flight simulator at the time it could end up sending erroneous keyboard commands to whatever application you do have on your screen at the time whether it be word excel or anything it doesn't matter it's sending keyboard commands to it so in that case is always a danger that um, your little microcontroller can take over your computer um, so just be aware of that and if that does happen then I'm afraid you just have to reboot uh, and start again <coughs> excuse me okay so the other library that we need um, is the rotary.h library and that can be downloaded from Brian Lowe's uh, github repository page at that address and it doesn't cost anything so moving to the rest of the setup section um, rotary uh, r1 r1 is the just the short abbreviated name that i've given this particularly particular rotary encoder r1 um, equals rotary 2 comma 3 now all that's saying is it's setting up pin terminals 2 and 3 on your microcontroller for the rotary um, signal wires there's two of them and I'll come back to that shortly one's uh, considered to be the serial clock wire and the other is the serial data uh, wire then we come down we're setting space in memory for a particular value that value being the pin terminal number for the push button that is on our rotary encoder so the signal wire from the push button is going to pin terminal 4 and then we set up one other little bit of space in memory for a value called button r1 state that uh, descriptor there could be anything as can that actually the, the bit in white there as can that you can call it whatever you like as long as you're consistent with the code as you go through in the way that you name this but what this is for is monitoring the voltage state of uh, pin terminal number four as we go throughout the code and we're creating space in memory to record that data and it's given an initial value of zero zero is uh, uh, a low voltage state and one will be a high voltage state then we come down to the short void setup section uh, we initiate our uh, rotary encoder library by putting r1 which is what we called this rotary encoder dot begin so we're starting the process equals true and that will now start monitoring what's actually going on on that particular rotary encoder and then we also for the push button part of the rotary encoder we're setting pin number four that one pin terminal four on the Leon, on the leonardo to uh, an input and we're taking advantage of the onboard pull-up resistor uh, on the microcontroller itself so that you don't have to put uh, physical resistors into your wiring circuit now we come down to the void loop and what we're doing here is we're basically monitoring the uh, physical rotary encoder and we are looking to see if it's being turned clockwise or anti-clockwise so all of this basically says if by turning the rotary encoder they de we detect that it's turning clockwise then issue a keyboard command of a lowercase a if you're whenever you're using uh, this type of code and you want to send keyboard commands to your pc and or flight simulator then always put lowercase codes uh, lowercase um, alphas here so we're sending keyboard command a to the PC and to the flight simulator and that letter A will have to be assigned to something in the flight simulator um, whether you're using X-Plane or MSF FS 2020 and what we are going to be using A for is a clockwise motion of the um, barometer adjustment knob in, in the altimeter um, so if you remember we have got a barometer setting at sea level of 29.92 uh, inches of mercury or I think it's 1013 pascals or something I can't remember what the other one is but anyway 
by turning the rotary encoder clockwise we are going to be adjusting that setting short delay of 10 second uh, 10 milliseconds and then we release all further keyboard commands on this loop cycle remembering that this goes round and round and round thousands of times a second okay so that's detecting whether the rotary encoder has been turned clockwise we then come down to the next bit to determine whether or not the rotary enco uh, encoder has been turned counterclockwise and if it if the code detects that that is the case then we are going to issue a keyboard command of B and that again needs to be assigned in the flight simulator and we are assigning that uh, that B to turn the barometer adjustment knob in a counterclockwise direction in the simulator short delay of 10 milliseconds and then release all keyboard commands on this loop cycle so that we don't continually send signals um, to the flight simulator unnecessarily then we come to the last part and this is a very short code but we are only talking one rotary encoder after all with a push button and this last part here is related to that push button so we are saying that button R1 state which is a variable that we set up uh, in the uh, upper part of the code equals whatever's happening at uh, pin terminal 4 which we are calling push button R1 and if the code detects that the button state is low then it will issue a keyboard command of C this time and that letter C also has to be assigned in the flight simulator and what I've assigned that to is the uh, the uh, barometer adjustment knob can be pushed inwards and that will reset the altimeter to C level uh, of 29.92 uh, inches of mercury uh, we delay for 150 milliseconds this time to give uh, to give the, the uh, code a chance to get that um, keyboard command sent to the simulator and then after that 150 milliseconds we um, release all keyboard commands so that there are no more spurious signals being sent to your PC and the flight simulator itself that is it um, nothing more to it than that now obviously that's just one rotary encoder um, if you want to add more then you can uh, unfortunately the code obviously gets longer uh, the more rotary encoders uh, that you include but this will at least give you um, a good idea as to how to connect a uh, simple and sig single rotary encoder with push button into your system and how to get it to work with the flight simulator now I'm going to make this code available to you in my Google Drive folder um, so if you click on the link which will be in the video description you'll be able to download this and have a play with it okay so the best thing to do now is to go back and uh, or go to I should say the flight simulators in turn explain and uh, Microsoft 2020 to see if our code actually works okay so here we are in explain to start with and this is the gauge that we're looking to adjust the altimeter with built-in barometer this is the adjustment knob for the barometer here um, and I'm going to do this with the mouse to start with so if I turn this um, clockwise then it increases um, the altitude if I turn it anti-clockwise it decreases and if I push it in it resets it to mean sea level which is 29.92 inches of mercury uh, or 1013 at millibars that's what it was millibars okay so now I'm going to take my mouse right out of the equation um, I've got my uh, rotary encoder on the desk here connected to my Leonardo and I'm going to turn this um, clockwise to start with so if we turn it clockwise you can see that the altitude is increasing like so now I'm going to turn it anti-clockwise and it decreases 
like so. And if I uh, select the push button on the uh, rotary encoder, like so, it sets it back, uh, sets the pressure back to uh, main sea level. So in X plane, brilliant, everything seems to work. So what we're going to do now is to go over to Microsoft 2020. Although before we do that, I should just point out in the settings, keyboard settings, um, I've already done this to save time on the video, but here are the um, letters that I've assigned for this particular operation. So we've got barrow selection up a bit, which is A, that's clockwise. Barrow selection down a bit, which is um, counterclockwise, which is uh, done by issuing keyboard command of B. And the keyboard command of C uh, resets the pressure to mean C level. Okay. So now let's go and have a look at uh, Microsoft. Right, so I've loaded uh, another Cessna 172 Skyhawk into Microsoft 2020. And here again is the altimeter with inbuilt barometer. This is the uh, adjustment knob for that. So if I turn this um, uh, clockwise, the, um, the altitude and pressure increase. And if I turn it, oh, if I turn it uh, counterclockwise, then the barometer pressure and altitude decrease. And if I press the button here, now don't tell me it doesn't work on um, on the control here, which is I was trying to set the pressure back to mean sea level. No, it doesn't work, but I think it doesn't when I'm using um, uh, my own physical rotary encoder. So there might be something wrong with Microsoft's interaction point here. So we'll find out. So I'll take my mouse right out of the way. I'm going to turn my um, rotary encoder clockwise. So the altitude is increasing, as is the uh, air pressure. And then I've turned my rotary encoder counterclockwise. And you can see them going in the other direction. Lovely. And then I'm going to press the button on my rotary encoder to see if it sets the um, pressure back to mean, um, mean sea level. And it does. Well, that's good because that means that uh, my little setup here, albeit very temporary and prototype, works better than the actual aircraft written by Microsoft. Woohoo! Um, got one over on them. Okay, so the only other thing we need to do as before is to go to um, control options and look at keyboard settings. I'm just going to put Alt in there to refine our search. There is our keyboard command A for Alpha to increase the altimeter. B Bravo to decrease it and C Charlie for uh, resetting the barometer back to mean sea level. Okay, so that all seems to work. Right, so I think job done in both simulators. Excellent. So we now go and have a few words to sum up. Okay, so that really brings us to the end of this particular video. Although as a uh, brief reminder, don't forget that I've left a copy of the Arduino sketch code for one single rotary encoder in my Google Drive folder, along with a copy of the theoretical wiring layout that I showed you earlier. The access link for these files can be found in the video description. For now though, I thank you once again for your continued support. And if you found the video of some use, then please uh, consider subscribing to the Fun of Flying channel as well as smashing the like button as this will help with the old YouTube algorithm and will be useful to me in providing future content. So thanks again and ta-ta for now.